Our devotion on suffering comes from Psalm 119 as well, verses 65 to 72. The psalmist writes, Do good to your servant according to your word, Lord. Teach me knowledge and good judgment, for I trust your commands. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I obey your word. You are good, and what you do is good. Teach me your decrees. Though the arrogant have smeared me with lies, I keep your precepts precepts with all my heart. Their hearts are callous and unfeeling, but I delight in your law. It was good for me to be afflicted, so that I might learn your decrees. The law from your mouth is more precious to me than thousands of pieces of silver and gold. This is God's word. One of the biggest questions that's asked of Christians is, if God is good, if he's loving, if he's all-powerful, then why is there so much suffering in the world? Undoubtedly, it's a question you've wrestled with, too. It's not the first time you've thought of that. It's one that we've talked about in worship here as well. Uh, We don't have time to plumb the depths of that question, but we'll make a start at it uh, this morning. And we'll start with this. That question identifies something really important. It identifies the fact that suffering is a departure from the way that things ought to be. It identifies that suffering is a departure from perfect. Ah, well, a Christian has an answer for that one, don't we? We can answer by saying, yes, God created everything to be perfect and to function perfectly, but the entry of sin into the world changed everything for the worse. It wrecked God's perfect creation. When God had that perfect world that he had created, he had given that command to Adam and Eve to not eat from the tree in the the middle of the garden, and he told them what would happen if they did. And of course, they ate from that tree, and everything that God said would happen did. Death entered the world, sin entered the world, and so also did suffering enter the world. That suffering was not God's fault, that suffering The fault lies with us, with mankind. It is our sin that causes suffering. It's our sin that wrecked God's perfect creation. But God was not unconcerned about the suffering of people. He's very concerned. He cares about people. And he doesn't doesn't want them to suffer. And so, he, he wanted to save them from that suffering. He wanted to offer them a future when there won't be any more suffering, any more pain, any more crying. And so what did God do? Of course, what we're looking forward to celebrating. He sent his his own son to do what? To be given over to suffer. God sent his own son to suffer the punishment that we deserve. In one of the most paradoxical scenes of all time, we received the greatest blessing we will ever receive from the most brutal suffering that has ever happened. He was mocked, spit on, beaten, whipped. He was crucified. And worst of all, he was forsaken by God, experiencing hell on the cross. Yet, through his suffering, we have been healed. Through his suffering, death, and resurrection, We have been saved. That message, that message of the gospel, it changes the way that we look at suffering. It gives us a different perspective, a gospel perspective. It it certainly doesn't make us look forward to suffering. It doesn't make us enjoy suffering. But it gives us a different perspective. Because if God brought about the greatest blessing that anyone could ever receive through the most brutal suffering then when you are going through any kind of suffering in life, your perspective is this. Might God be able to bless me through this suffering? Might God be able to bless me through this affliction? And the answer is a resounding yes. That's what the psalmist said. Look at verse 67. He says, Before I was afflicted, I went astray. So before I experienced suffering... Life was pretty good. I was going astray. I didn't need God in his word. But now I obey your word. In verse 71, he writes, It was good for me to be afflicted so that I might learn your decrees. You see, in affliction and suffering, God is pruning us. 
We got any gardeners here? You know what pruning is? Um, my understanding of pruning, I'm not a gardener myself, but my understanding of pruning is it, it's cutting away what's harmful for growth so that the, the plant can reach its full potential, it can grow to its full potential. And so God prunes us in a similar way with suffering and affliction. He cuts away the things that are harmful for the growth of our faith, for the survival of our faith, so that our faith can grow and flourish. It's good for us to suffer in that way. In affliction and in suffering, God also disciplines us. It would be the worst punishment of all if God left us to our own sinful devices to do whatever we want, whenever we wanted. But, but he brings, he allows suffering to come into our life so that we would be led to repentance, so that we would be led back to him. Whatever God is doing through suffering, the Christian has a different perspective. The perspective of the gospel, that God can work these blessings, but also a perspective of trust. That you might not be able to pinpoint the reason why you're suffering. God sometimes doesn't allow us to see those things. He doesn't allow us to see that this is the exact reason why I'm suffering. You might be in the middle of suffering. You might not see how any blessing could possibly come from this kind of suffering. However, Approaching suffering with a perspective of trust means that we trust that God is good, that God is loving, and that God does have our eternal good at heart. And so even if we don't have all the answers, we can step back and say, Lord, we trust you. Take it and use it. Take it and bless me. We pray that, that God would give us that perspective as we approach suffering, as we face suffering, so that we could say with full confidence, like the psalmist said, it was good for me to be afflicted. Amen.